never told her, we cannot hold her in the battle. Welcome, everybody, to the Indiana Basketball Weekly. And look, Brian Moore smiling. That's a first. So, well. you must already know, the Hoosiers came from behind after playing a horrible Shitty first, half. first half. They played yeah. an immaculate second half. They pulled a game out in Maryland. It's the first two-game winning streak since December when I think they beat Kennesaw State and North Alabama back-to-back. Those powerhouses. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> what is a win is what you said back then, and it's still the same. I'm your host, Mike Goodpaster, and I want to remind you guys to go to BetMGM like I did today and bet the Indiana Hoosiers. It's too late to bet them as three and a half to one underdogs, but it paid off well today. Click on the link in the description down below to check out BetMGM. And of course, as always, we've got our co-host from God Woodson, Brian Moore. How you doing, Brian? I'm feeling really good right now. I'm feeling better. You didn't bet money on him. See, I believed in him, so I bet money on him. Well, if I had bet the money you bet, I'd probably be jumping up and down. But you know. Well, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm trying to be cool as the other side of the pillow, as they say. And Indiana comes back to win. Brian Wetters get the first comment, which means you'll win a million dollar gift certificate to the Brian Moore <laughs> store on the internet. Been waiting for this accomplishment all season long. Which you accomplishment is that, by the way? Winning two in a row. <laughs> Well, you know that, and they also said this is the third time they've came back from over fifteen point deficit to win a game. I mean, they really fought hard in that second half. Yeah. No question. And I mean, the thing is this, and I think those games have been against teams that are similar to us, which are teams that don't play forty minutes. But it just goes to show you, if you're going to play twenty minutes, play the last half, not the first yeah. half. Maryland led this game 43 to 33 at the half. Jameer Young had 12 points at the half. Julian Reese and Dante Scott, 11 each, almost all their points by three guys. Malik Renu had nine. Mackenzie Mbaku had six for IU. Khalil Ware did not score in the first half. Maryland shot 52% in the first half from the field, and they took advantage of nine Indiana turnovers. And the turnovers were, I think, the big issue. Turnovers in defense in the first half, Brian. Well, yeah, and and – I don't know where where his head was at today, but it clearly was not in the game because what he had four or five of those turnovers in the first half. I mean, he yeah. wasn't handling the ball. Uh, you know, he was getting the ball stripped out of his hands. Uh, I, I I was really kind of nervous going in after that first half that we were going to get our ass kicked. But I was you know, really the, nervous. <laughs> but the rest of the team picked it up. Um, I mean, where did it eventually get some points, but. You know, he got, what, 15 rebounds and nine points. He had a good second half. Uh, but let's face it, the the combination of Galloway, as you said when you texted me earlier, Galloway, X, and Mbako really turned the tail for this. For, I mean, they, they were playing lights out today. Yeah, and Long came out, scored the first five points of the second half to put Maryland up by 15. And then Indiana got it under 10 when Malik Renew scored. He got an and one, which brought Indiana to within seven. He had 12 points at that time. And from there, this team just took off. And the way the ball moved on offense, and a lot of that goes to Xavier Johnson, but a lot of that goes to Trey Galloway. The two of those together really complement well today. Yes, they yeah, complement each, each other great. Yeah. Yeah, they're both they're both facilitators. You know, they, uh, but the pace of the game, I think you really have to get tip the hat to X because he does, he does speed up the game for Indiana. No, no question in my mind. Uh, but the, that backcourt, that, that backcourt of, of Galloway and, and X, I mean, today they were just, they were amazing. They really were. Yeah. And Mbaku, the three of them together because McKenzie put up what, 24 points, 26 points. Right. All those were huge. Joseph Michael says the IU girls won also, which they did. Uh, Brian Wetter says, what you speculate, Coach Woodson said, the team at half, to their credit, the team played relaxed. I would tell you this. I, I would almost think that maybe the seniors, Trey and Xavier, were the ones that maybe spoke at halftime because they played like they did. And Trey Galloway going to the hole is damn near as effective as Xavier is. I mean, they both are very good at slashing to the basket. 
mm -hmm. we know Xavier's playing with a messed up left arm a little bit. Luckily, she's right handed, so we should be all right there. But yeah, but it does affect his free throw shooting, obviously. But I mean, well, look, well, like he was great before, Brian. I mean, I couldn't uh, believe Trey, Trey shoots fifty three percent. What the hell is that? And then it really freaked me out because I really think. We could have had some major issues if Maryland at the two minute mark would have just commenced fouling us every time we got the ball. Well, yeah, and, but, but this is also the second game in a row where New was actually shooting the ball well from the free throw line. Yeah, but all and our misses were in the last two minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was sitting. But you know what? You got to give tip your hat to Maryland. They actually played a really good game. I mean, you know, they shot what, 37% from three? Um, they shot 48% field goal percentage. I mean, you know, you got to give them credit. They played a really good game, and we still beat them. Really, I don't think either team played a really good game. I thought both teams played very hard, though. And I think both teams played a good half. Just luckily for Indiana, their half was better was than Maryland's half. Yeah, because this is a game where I did not think we would see a final score, Brian, of 83 to 78. No, no. But I, I figured if it was going to go into the 80s, we would win because we we're better offense. Than they are. They're not going to score 80 some points. Well, they've got to have three guys score them. And that's basically what they had today. They did have Long, who had 12, but that was, I mean, five of those points came right at the start of the second half. Julian Reese scored 13 points. He played Killy Ware much better than he played him in the game in Bloomington. Oh, Dante he, Scott, yeah, Dante Scott, 15 points. Jameer Young, 22 points. Jameer Young's a legit guard. Trey Galloway, 12 points, four assists. Khalil Ware, nine points, 15 rebounds. So this is the thing about Khalil Ware. He had some block shots, too, as always. I don't have those numbers. If you got them, you can add to that. But the thing was, even though he played terrible, 15 rebounds. And right. all nine of those points, I think, were scored in the last six or seven minutes of the game. So it's, once again, even if he doesn't score, he is a good enough athlete that he could affect the game more than just by scoring points. Oh, and you saw that many times in the game where he was making guys alter their shots because they didn't want to get it blocked. I mean, you know, from a rebounding standpoint and, and um, you know, defense around the rim, where was still where if just his shooting and ball handling was just atrocious. I mean, but, you know, I'm looking at the stats and, you know, he had 15 rebounds. All those were defensive rebounds. He didn't have offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's not a good thing. No. And Galloway had two, Renew had two. I mean, uh, Xavier had one. I mean, we only had six offensive rebounds. That's not a very good number. I mean, if we're going to critique it from a negative standpoint, I would say that's an area of concern. Uh, but, you know, we had 14 assists. What we have, 14 assists? I mean, between Xavier and Galloway, they were facilitating the ball all day long. And that was a, that was a really nice sight to see. It really was. Yeah, and the thing is, there's a lot of things to pick away here. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff. But the way I take it is this. Anytime you're this late in the season, you're down 15 points on the road. If you win the game, that says everything right there. No, they did not play well. They played stupid at times, especially in the first half. But they played hard. And there's a lot to be said for playing hard. But that first half was rough to watch. And there yeah. were like three occasions where Maryland brought the ball down the court. And I think the announcers brought it up <coughs> once. And only like two Hoosiers even ran down. The other one stayed behind. Yeah, and they were, they, brought, they were still on the other side of the of the half court line. I mean, that's that's insane. But I don't know what Woody said at halftime. You know, like the, like Brian Walter said, but something was said by somebody. Yeah, because they came out and played the hell. They played with heart in the second half. Yes. Why can't they do that all the time? Because if they did, we wouldn't be winning the Big Ten, but we would be in a position like Northwestern where you got a good shot at the tournament. Because if you face it, I mean, we've used excuses all year long. Xavier was hurt. This guy was hurt. Northwestern missed three starters yesterday, and they still fought Iowa to the end, and they won at Maryland before that 67-61. to 61. There's right. a lot to be said for just playing hard. If you can impose your will on the other team, you've always got a chance to win. And the fact is, with Mbako, we do have a dude that can knock down to three. And he showed and he that. He showed that. Today. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part about it was there was no hesitation on his threes, where a lot of times you can see him kind of think about it. Think about it, right. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I mean. Not today. I mean, yeah. And I, I don't think, put it like this, if you had Xavier and no Trey, 
I don't think we would be any good. I think the two of those, as you said before, when they play well, they complement each other. And I think they complement each other by watching them because they kind of feed off of each other's energy. Right. If that makes any sense. And that energy goes over to everybody else. You know, it's, it's kind of like gonorrhea. Once you got it, everybody else you come <laughs> in contact with has got it and you can't get rid of it. And no, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, now I think we're going to make a big run in the Big Ten tournament. But I can tell you this. Today, I watched this game, and it was one of the few games I've seen this year where it was actually enjoyable to watch them. At yeah. least that last, just because you felt, even if they lost the game, they were given everything they possibly had. And like I said, well, you, I, saw, you saw Renew dive on the floor for a loose ball. Twice. 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 And, and I do, I do the loose ball. And we had not dove on the ground for a ball in nine games. And there's only been five games this year where we have dove on the floor head first for a loose ball. And to me, well, it's still a telling stat because I watched Northwestern yesterday, four or five guys, different guys on the floor after the ball. So hopefully this team is starting to get it. And, yeah, it may be too late. But as they say, Brian, it's better late than never. Well, you know, part of winning programs are you win at the end. I mean, it's, it's how you finish, not how you start. And – what, look at UConn last year. They won the – they were a much better team at the end of the year than they were at the beginning of the season last year. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think we should probably compare ourselves to UConn right now. Uh, I'm not, but, I'm, but I, I'll tell you what. I you think said somebody it. Said, somebody said something to renew today or sometime because, I mean, hell, even – he actually passed – kicked the ball out the cups. I was shocked. I almost fell out of my seat. Hey, Cups hit a couple of early shots, and the way we played, this would have been a lot worse than a 15-point deficit without those shots. But to shoot, you know, I mean, we th we shot 44 44% from three today. I mean, that's that's fantastic. And that's yeah. what we need. That's what everybody needs. And, of course, we gave up 38%, even though Maryland can't shoot threes. Yeah, they were almost 10 points higher than they normally are. I know. It's like everybody can shoot threes when they play us. But, <laughs> well, I mean, it's But true. the other side of it is, too, though, is, like you said, the turnovers. If we don't have the turnovers like we did today, I don't know if it had been this close. Uh, yeah, but that's part of the game. I mean, you play 40 minutes, and, I mean, there's a lot I know, of things. but we had you, what? I, hey, you could also say, hey, if they didn't go shit cold and couldn't play defense for 10 minutes, we'd have lost the game. <laughs> Robert Stewart says, yo from Firo. How you doing, Robert? It's almost time for opening day, too. So, is it, Are there uh, any girls on for Robert? Robert doesn't even like girls. He's been using it as a cover, we've discovered. <laughs> Ain't that right, Robert? I'm just kidding, Robert. And Robert, by the way, there's no other way to call Peyton Sparks other than horrible. And that's not a shot. It's just the truth. But. We saw. Yeah, it I, I, I got to say one thing. I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I don't really understand that one play with uh, when Reese hit uh, Xavier in the throat with his his forearm. How the hell can that not be a flagrant? You know what I've come to discover? I've come to discover this. I think most times when they go over and look at replays, there's a guy sitting behind there that runs that that flips a coin and just tells them, "Hey, it's heads." Because well, I don't think you're going to look at it. I, I, I don't think, think I don't think it's a flagrant foul, but I think by the letter of the rule, it is a flagrant foul. But he held his elbow up there. It wasn't just like a <clears throat> type thing. I mean, are you going to compare what Gunn did several games back to what Reese did with Xavier? I don't even remember what Gunn did several games back because Gunn I didn't know Gunn's did a, done anything. The chicken wing thing. Yeah, right. Did they call him for it? I don't even remember. Yeah, they called him for That's what I mean. Before. So you got different officials that officiate differently. I Really, I thought this game overall was not poorly officiated. I thought it was pretty even all the way through. So I'm not going to bitch about the one. Plus the play is with 13 minutes left. You didn't get the call. You got plenty of time. And the thing that impressed me the most about that, and I texted you to it, was the fact that Xavier Johnson walked away from it. You know, yeah. there's been many times where we'll see somebody where he would turn around and, and probably it, or shove him or some <laughs> crap. But that also makes me think Xavier probably didn't really think it was a flagrant either. Well, it could have been an acting job, but it sure looked like he got him right in the throat. Um, Brian says Xavier should start, and I believe Gabe wouldn't mind deferring to a senior. Oh, I think deferring to a senior is bullshit. But I also think this. <laughs> 
I think from watching Xavier that Xavier brings a lot of energy when he comes off the bench. And it's not like Cups is playing 20 minutes. And the minutes Cups played at the start of the game, he did well. So I would say if Xavier looks like I mean, because to me, he does bring energy to the court when he comes on it, Brian. So I don't think there's any issue with hell. You remember in well, 1980, Cups only played eight minutes, and most of those, were, yeah. I don't think he he made. I think he played one minute in the second half. I mean, yeah. He so I mean, overall, I don't think this. We always tell my players, it don't matter who starts, it's who finishes, because the guys right. I finish with are the guys I trust. The guys I start are just the guys I'm starting. But well, we all know that you know. Leo won the game because he shot a three and made it. Well, so. there is no fucking doubt that that is true. <laughs> because now there's – I think the record was four and one when Leo made a three before now this game. Five he and made one. A th- now it's five and one. So this is obviously Anthony Leal's fault because he doesn't get enough shots. Because <laughs> and You know what? That stupid-ass stat is what gave me hope when they were way behind. Because he yeah. had a three, and I think, well, shit, they almost always win when he hits a three. <laughs> what the hell? And we well, got we it. Have to, we three. Somebody's got to send a letter to Woody. You got to set up Leo for a wide open shot in the corner so we can win the game. Well, I'm sorry, but Woody should know this by now. I was being facetious. Thank you very much. But I'm not. He should know that by now. I think the first play, I think Leo should start. We just put him in until he makes a three, and then we take him out because the game has been won. I can't believe I was shocked. I mean, you realize where and, and Galloway pretty much played the entire game. I mean, yeah, and that was the time I brought up to you. Is he called a timeout at like the five minute mark? And we actually were on a little bit of a roll. I think our lead was seven or eight points, but he but called guess- the timeout to me. And right as he called the timeout, I watched Galloway at half court just trying to put his hands on his knees and start panting. Yeah. That timeout, I think, was so he didn't have to take a Galloway, a renew, yeah. or wear out because he got him that break. And then you had the timeout at what, under four? Right. So right there, you get two timeouts. I thought that was a brilliant job by Woodson doing that. And this is the difference between me and everybody else. I will give you credit when I think you deserve it. And I think today, I thought Xavier Johnson played extremely well. I thought Woody made some critical decisions that worked out. So I would think this, if you're an IU fan and you're still bitching about this, and you can still think he's not a good coach, but at least give him credit when he is. And today he was, and today Xavier was good. And today, overall, this team was solid. They played really hard. If you're a true Indiana fan, if you have a team that goes out there and battles their ass off to win a game, you should be happy. with. Yeah, my whole issue with this team has been I have not seen that. And the first 20 minutes were as bad as I've seen this year. But that second 20 minutes was as good as you saw. Yeah, and and the thing is, now they got to go to Minnesota. Minnesota's a hard place to win. They're a really well coached team. They've got a they've got Cam Christie, who's one of the best guards in the Big Ten. It's not going to be an easy game. And Minnesota's sitting at 18 and 11. They desperately need this win. And Minnesota played a Penn State team. Minnesota's game was about like I use. If you watched it yesterday, Penn State mm-hmm. jumped up like 40 to 19. And right. by the time you got to halftime, it was 41 to 30. And then, you know, Minnesota just kind of ran by them and beat them by seven or eight. And you've got Minnesota, you got Michigan State. The whole key to this, Brian, is this. Right now, Indiana is what, eight and ten in the Big Ten? Michigan State is nine and nine. Minnesota is nine and nine. You have a chance to move to up a little them. bit farther. Yeah. Now, if you lose both, you may end up in the bottom four, which we don't want that. But right. if you can win both of these games, or if you win just one of them, you might be able to move up another spot because right now, from looking at us, not counting the games that are in process right now, Indiana actually sits number nine. So yeah. there we, I mean, it would be nice to get that extra. What was it? Okay. So if they get between, so you get a double by first through four, and then four, five through eight gets. A single game. Well, wait a minute. Gets two games, right? I'm trying to remember how this works. The f- <laughs> All I know is if you're in the bottom four, you got to play one extra game, and it makes you got to play five, five games, games and four days. Five, five games days if you're in the bottom four, days. right? Yeah. Four games if you're in the second group. Three games if you're in the third group. 
we would have to be in the top eight, I think, to really. And make what a you're saying, though, it's 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 possible. feasible. It's yes, feasible. It is feasible. I mean, the other thing is this, though. When you look at it right now, you're not in those first round games, and if you're sitting there, if you're sitting there at ten or nine. I think nine, you would be in the same bracket as Purdue. At 10, you wouldn't be. So it's not old. But really, I think from watching games, I think Illinois may be the most dangerous team here. Well, they're the most dangerous, but they also have the, the opportunity to screw up the most, in my opinion. Why is that? I, I, well, because of the guy that's coaching on their sidelines. Very good coach like from him. everything I've seen. Doesn't matter whether yeah, we I, like him or not. The same thing with Fran McCafferty. Dude can coach. His team has gotten better. Dude can coach offense. He can't coach defense worth a shit. Yeah, well, our coach can coach defense, but he can't coach offense worth a shit. If we combine the two, we have to What wins championships, defense or Fucking offense, offense, because you know what? Okay. Hey, I guarantee you this. If you go back and you look at the history of the NCAA tournament, teams that ranked in the top 10 of offense won national championships more than the teams that are top 10 on defense. If you look at it, the best defense in this conference is what, Rutgers? Rutgers ain't going to the tournament. Iowa has a great offense. They got a shot to go now. Um, Brian Wetters says he thinks Purdue can win it all. I think they can, but I I don't think they will. Somebody's going to have to upset UConn. UConn is a very bad matchup for them. I think UConn runs them out of the building. With what they, they did today, who did they play? Seton Hall today? I oh, mean, they, they beat the brakes off. Seton Hall's a good team. Yeah. Seton Hall. They beat the crap out of them. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, that was a game that was close for ten minutes, and then they beat the hell out of them, and they got. I think the best I think I think them. UConn could destroy Purdue. I, I think I, I think UConn could destroy everybody. Yeah. Now we all know it, how that is. Great. They may lose in the second round, but which I mean, is the only hope the rest of the teams have because the further yeah. they go, yeah. I, but I mean, look, I think we have a lot to be happy about today. I mean, we had balanced scoring. We had a lot of guys doing what they're not normally doing. I mean, you look at Mbako with his scoring, his confidence level. Plus, you know, you didn't mention it, but he's <coughs> excuse me, he's getting more and more aggressive, moving towards the rim. I mean, that, that's what I mean. That was he basically when he got the shots, he went up confidently with him. Everything yeah. was aggressive today. But and we, we've seen. Lines. We've seen spurts of that before, but not for an extended period of time in games. Right. Uh, Brian Wetter says the difference is Braden Smith. Braden Smith's really good. The problem is this. He's not as good as UConn's guys. And UConn, I think, has the best coach in the country. I mean, Danny Hurley's a damn good coach. Last year, they were like a six or seven seed when they won it all, weren't they, Brian? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they, they weren't as rated as highly as they They did not have a good part of the year last year. They came on strong. I think in February, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and the thing is, they're doing the same thing here. It's just they were so good that even in November and December, they were kicking everybody's ass. I mean, we know what they were like. We played them. That didn't work out too well. No, that was actually very ugly. Yeah, and <laughs> if we ever got another shot, it would probably be even uglier. But, but I, 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 I still think we got a shot at going deep in the Big Ten tournament. I'm not sure we can win it, but I still think we can go deep. See, I think this. I don't think there's much chance to go deep unless you get the proper draw. I, I would say a draw that would have, like, Iowa in it, Nebraska in it, Northwestern, would all scare me just because of the guard play. Well, it just would. Here's Especially the thing. If, Iowa. If, if, we, if we can get where to play like he normally does – Adding in and Baco and Renault and, and Xavier and and Galloway, we're a tough team to beat. I'm sorry. Well, you could be sorry, but we don't know that we're a tough team to beat like that because we've never seen that. And that's not to be rude. It's just we haven't seen that. And that is why I say a deep run is very unlikely because we've seen nothing to tell us that that will happen. Because the problem you have here, I think, is this. Maybe they were on the day because where it was off, so the ball was swung around more to the outside. There was more driving. There was more kicking the ball out. Where when where is the main guy, we're throwing it to the post, everybody's standing and watching. So that's what I don't know. I don't know if those two things can combine for a run. They might be able to combine for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or even a game. But to be able to win. Don't you think this was where's worst game that you've seen him play this year? 
I would not say that because I don't remember a lot of the early season games. Um, I think UConn, he struggled, but I think that was more the byproduct of UConn. Uh, we're 2-0 and last two. Where has to wake up? Where's been awake? He played a bad game today. Still had 15 rebounds and, what, four or five block shots? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean. Also, he had six turnovers, so that didn't help any. All right. Uh, if we can play the Big Ten tournament like today's second half, we can maximize our chances. But remember this. Most teams in the Big Ten ranked ahead of us in Maryland usually have no issues with Maryland. So, yeah, but you still you got to give credit for the fact that they're they've won two in a row. But we're not talking about that. We're we're, we're off peaking. of that now. We're talking about winning in the Big Ten tournament. Right, against and I'm talking much about better peaking teams. at the right time. Okay, we're peaking as far as our play. Mm, I don't know. That we, know. I, I, we will find out against Minnesota at Minnesota is what I would say. Well, you said the same thing last week when we beat Wisconsin. We'll see what happens with. I said we'll Maryland. see what happens with Maryland. Yes, and we right. played awful for twenty minutes, and I'm sorry, but an awful twenty minutes. Once we get to 10 days from now, end your season. You know, you're probably not making a run like that in a Big Ten tournament against an Iowa or something. It helps that Maryland is not a great shooting team. And like I said, I'm not trying to be negative, but I don't think that we can necessarily say things have changed because we're still seeing bits and pieces. And let's face it, Wisconsin is a talented team, but they're not playing real great right now. And Maryland has three talented players. And George Geronimo scored today. That had to make you proud. Yeah, and he also got the ball stripped from him a couple of times, too. So that made me yeah. laugh. Well, why did that make you laugh? Because that is the most positive impact he's had on an Indiana game in, like, over a year. <laughs> <laughs> good point. All right. That was, a, that was a good setup line. There you Michael go. Houghton, let's win four in a row and then see what happens in the Big Ten tournament. I, you know, I'll take losing the next two if we could just win all the games in the Big Ten tournament. But I think I, I think this. I think this team, the way they played today, I don't know if they are capable of playing two halves like this. But we're about to find out, and there is the possibility it could happen, and we've seen teams this poorly ranked go into conference tournaments and win it. Right. So... Well, I, that's why I said to you earlier on in the week, I said, wouldn't it be ironic, one of the worst seasons we've had in a long time in the Big Ten, it would make sense that we actually win it for once. I mean, we've been in, we've gotten into that tournament how, how, how many years and, and just failed miserably in that tournament? I think it's every year. Well, we've it's made it to the what? We've never won it, have we? No, we've only been in the finals twice, I think, right? But you forget who you're talking to. I think the only way you can uh, have a successful tournament is to win the tournament. And really, that's the only way they can have a successful one this year because it's the only way they can extend their season into March or deep into March since it's already March. It but, is already March. All right, so next up, they've got Minnesota. We've talked about them. Cam Christie, I think, is the issue there with Minnesota. And like I said, Minnesota's 9-9 nine and nine in the Big Ten. So if we beat them, we are tied with them at 9-10. and 10. We get to play Michigan State. We beat them. We're 10-10. Ten and 10. We're 10-10. Ten and 10. You're really good at counting. But if we're 10-10. Ten and 10, and yeah, it was that I, Kelly School of Business, you know, that helped me. I know other people that went there that had issues. And, no, I'm not talking about the person everybody thinks of time. I'm talking about, like, <laughs> I, I, there's a few people that went there that, you know, I, when I met you and you told me you went to the Kelly School of Business, I compared it to the other four or five people I knew that went there. And I thought, well, I'm not holding that much hope for this. But I guess it's worked out okay. But uh, well, Indiana, sure. Indiana, Minnesota, what do you think happens? Well, it'll be. I think it'll be a tight <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it'll be a tight game. Um. I think our defense, if they play like they did in the second half today, I think our defense will keep us in the game. And it really comes down to if we can get the play we got today, I think we win by two. How's that? I think that there's next to no chance to win this game. And I say that based on what I did before. Now, you know I bet in the end of the day because when I looked at it. Yeah, but you just me. He's like eight and a half. And I'm like, you better take that bet. Well, I know I took them to win the game, but I also took the eight and a half just to cover my ass, just in case they didn't, but they covered and I get my money back. So I'm not a sucker, but I agree with Brian Wetters. This is the go. thing. All right. If you're going to bet a game now, you don't bet a team that you're not sure what team showing up with Minnesota. They've been consistently pretty good over the last 10 games. 
That's what I would say there. And they are very hard to beat at home. And if you look at the past here, they beat Northwestern at home. They beat Penn State at Penn State. They beat Michigan State at home. They lost to Iowa by five on the road. They lost to Purdue by eight on the road. They hammered Rutgers at home. They hammered Ohio State. They got hammered at Nebraska, but who doesn't? Uh, Nebraska's like Nebraska's like the bar that has free alcohol. You go there, you're getting hammered. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, they played really well against Illinois. They lost to Illinois 105 to 97. Um, they that was Penn in State Illinois. Seven, yeah, they beat Penn State 75-70. I, 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 it's not that I don't think they have any chance. I just think right now you've got Minnesota's playing for more. I mean, if they win their last two, get a game or two in the Big Ten tournament, they're probably going to make the tournament. Whereas with Indiana, the only chance is to win the conference tournament. I think Minnesota wins the game 78-74. So it, this point spread, I think, is going to pop at like 9 or 10. But I'm going to nail that and go to bed MGM and take the Hoosiers at the 10. <laughs> and really, the Rutgers thing I had to bet because I really thought the point spread should have probably been like three or three and a half in favor of Rutgers. Because I think these were pretty equal teams, and whichever one at home should probably be a three-point favorite just based on that, if that makes any sense. Was that – you know, nobody's brought it up. Isn't that the first time we beat Maryland at Maryland in a long time? Hell, I don't know. Usually whenever we beat somebody, it's the first time we beat them in a long time, it seems like. It does. Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't beaten Northwestern in when? Uh, By the way, who did you buy a new shirt today? No, I had this shirt on last year. I only last break year. this shirt out when I'm positive. The black shirts for when I'm negative. Robert well, you says should, I, you should brought it out then because you're negative about next game. You're saying we're going to. I'm not negative. No, see, this is the thing. If I give somebody the link to a website to bet on, I don't yeah. want to give them a Homer perspective. You know what I mean? <laughs> we almost choke again. I didn't yeah. say I, did, I didn't want to give him a Brian Moore perspective, which is the same thing as a Homer perspective. But, and that's all right, because you're an Indiana fan, so that makes sense. I'm an Indiana fan, too, and if I pick against them, it's just because I'm telling you that odds are they're probably not going to win the game. Odds are the game is going to be decided by four to eight points. That is the safe bet. So I would say if you're an Indiana fan, don't bet on Indiana. Unless I tell you to. If I tell you to, that means I'm serious. <laughs> Here, let me bow down. No, I'm just telling you. Right now, dude, you, you saw the bets I made today and over the week. I made like a grand. I haven't bet more than 50 bucks on a game. It don't always work out that way either, by the way. But for the year right now, I'm like 64, 64%, which is I will take. Yeah, but you bet Indiana because Maryland was an eight and a half point favorite. But I bet Indiana to win, too, because I really thought Indiana would win the game. I told you that. I got the proof. I got the bet. I had three and a half odds. I bet them in a three-team parlay even. Now I just need Drake and Ohio State. You asked me do you, You asked me earlier in the week if I thought we could beat Maryland. Yeah, and I told you no, did I not? You told me no, we could not. And then how did I bet the game? On the day of the game when I actually sat down and studied the rosters and all the numbers. <laughs> There's a difference. Okay, so I'm a homer because I do analysis. You're a hom- you're not a homer. Because yeah, but you you don't you do analysis with the ones that you, you are looking for a way for Indiana to win. I am yeah. looking for who has the best opportunity to win. There is a difference because I learned earlier in this season not to look at it the way you are because it cost me a little bit of money a couple times. You know those well, times too. Those times where I told yeah, you. Yeah, that's when you you're know, really angry and pissed off. And, yeah, I know. Yeah, and fuck, everybody needs to be fired. They need to just shut the damn whole state down and move it to California. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, guys, Indiana. They, they can all be under, what was it? Do you hear the new nickname for the governor of California? New scum? New scum? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think this, that's really not a cool thing to do if you're a presidential candidate. And that, if he didn't do that stuff, he'd still be president. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't talk like me and you do and get some people to elect you. If you know what I mean, you kind of got to got to be on the down low and maybe not call people scum and stuff, even though we all know Gavin Newsom is scum. But since we all know that, 
you really don't even have to call him that because anytime I see the guy, it makes my stomach turn inside out. Kind of like Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden, or <laughs> Mitch McConnell, well, and he's a Republican. Nobody's and he's retired. Him. Well, it's about damn time. All right, so we will be back Thursday. Brian, you want to go Thursday at like seven o'clock? That'll work. All right. Work. Remember, guys, BetMGM. Also on X, you can follow me at Grilling Truth. You can follow follow Brian at Got Dash Dash Woodson. Woodson. I got it. I was trying to do it slowly so people could comprehend it. <laughs> All right. Because, I mean, there's some Indiana fans that live in Kentucky. And once you move to Kentucky, if you just cross the border into Kentucky, your IQ drops 37 points. It's been proven. And all, no of sudden, and all of a sudden, and all of a sudden you find your sister attractive. Oh, man. You are, you, you know what? You just convinced me how much you hate Kentucky. I do hate Kentucky a lot. I mean, yeah. If Kentucky played the Russians, I would cheer for the Russians. Because I like them better. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, okay. guys. Send your hate mail to the you can, No, I mean, what I got is I've got a Kentucky fan that always comments on the YouTube talking shit about IU. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not my fault. I, number one, I was impressed a Kentucky fan knew how to use a computer and could read and write. And, I mean, what the hell? I know he's sitting there typing his computer. He's only got one tooth and his, you know, sister slash wife is sitting next to him telling him what to text. But I'm sure that was just it's probably more likely his sister than his wife. No, it's <laughs> both. It's his sister and his wife. All, right. all combined oh. into one because they're from Kentucky. Catch up, Brian. Damn. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little slow. Today. All right, guys. Really, we're really going to go ahead. We're, we're going to wrap the show up because Brian's bleeding. So the officials are not going to let the show continue until we get the blood stopped. We will be back on Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern live to recap Indiana Northwestern and look ahead to the Indiana-Michigan yeah. State game. But for now, Minnesota. guys, yeah, whatever, Minnesota. <laughs> they all start with an M. No, I said and to look forward to the Michigan State game Saturday. Yeah, but you said Northwestern. You didn't say Minnesota. It doesn't that. matter. It's close enough. Damn, <laughs> you're always on my ass. You're like my wife. Oh, you don't have boobs. So I'm not going to put up with it. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. But for Brian Moore, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been watching and listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.